Have you ever thought about how to be the best version of yourself in relationships? A lot of people do, because deep down, we all want love, respect, and to be truly valued by those around us. But how do we get this? How do we earn real value? See admiration, not just for superficial qualities or accomplishments, but for who we truly are at our core. Imagine every REL relationship as an adventure, and you are the explorer of your own self. You want to uncover the hidden treasures within your soul and share them with others. But to do that, you need a MAPA path leading to understanding connection. And ultimately, love today, I will guide you in discovering your true value in a relationship based on nine ancient Stoic philosophical lessons. So pay attention. For these are not mere empty pieces of advice you often hear. It's about empowering yourself in ways you may not have imagined. Get ready to shed light on the mysteries of cultivating a life filled with love and meaningful relationships, ones that are built on mutual respect and inner strength. Now let's get started. Lesson 1. Understanding Your True Worth So how does Stoicism relate to, to understanding your value in relationships Stoics believed in, focusing on what we have power over? And guess what? Yourself. Value is entirely within your grasp. It's not about how many likes you get on social media, or if someone is interested in you. It's about how you see and value yourself. Imagine that you are a rare gem that not everyone sees how valuable it is. The gem's value doesn't go down because someone walks by without noticing how valuable it is. It's still precious, rare, and one of a kind. That's you. Your value doesn't go down because someone walks by without noticing it. Let's be honest. We've all been rejected and felt inadequate, especially in today's world where everyone seems to be doing well. But here's the real deal with a stoic attitude. Your worth doesn't rest on what other people think of you. It comes from how you act and your values. In your actions, are you kind, honest, and living in a way that fits with your values? That's where your real worth lies. Stoics believed in thinking about oneself. So take a moment to think about your qualities, not just the obvious ones, but also the deeper ones. That's where you'll find your strength. In relationships, it's about finding power in your own value and self-worth, even if other people don't see it. Remember that realizing your worth isn't a one-time thing. It's a journey that lasts a lifetime and a practice that changes over time. It means waking up every day and telling yourself that you are valuable not because of what other people think, but because of the things that make you unique. Lesson 2. Hold yourself with honor now, before you start picturing a stoic as this ancient figure with a straight face and no smile. Let me clear things up. Stoicism isn't about hiding your feelings or not caring about anything. It's about knowing what's worth your time and energy. And guess what? The way you present yourself is worth your time and energy, so let's talk about what it means to treat yourself with respect in relationships. Sometimes we go to great lengths to impress someone, but in the process we lose sight of who we really are. We change how we dress and talk in order to get their approval. But here's the important thing. Your self-respect isn't based on your clothing style or the trendy places you go. It's based on how you present yourself, the things you do, and the choices you make. Imagine you're in a classroom. One student uses big words and gestures to impress the audience, while the other student stays calm and speaks confidently without any pretense. Which student do you think makes a lasting impression? Usually it's the one who is genuine and at ease in their own skin, right? This shows how important it is to present oneself with respect. The Stoics, who were known for their ideas about self-control and virtue, stressed how important it was to be honest and respect oneself. So how does this apply to dating today? It's simple. Be yourself. If you love reading, say so. If you have a strong passion for something, let it show. It's not about pretending to be someone else. It's about being comfortable and sure of who you are and knowing that you are valuable just the way you are. Respecting yourself. How you treat yourself sets the standard for how others will treat you. If you're always criticizing yourself, you're basically telling others they can do the same. But when you respect yourself and value your time, energy, and emotions, you're making a strong statement. I expect to be treated with respect. 
Think about what Epictetus, a wise Stoic philosopher, said. In relationships, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it. That counts. Look or words. It's about how you act and respond in different situations. Are you acting desperately or with grace? Are you giving up your values to fit in? Or are you staying true to yourself even if it means standing alone? This doesn't require perfection. We all have flaws and times when things don't go as planned. What matters is how you handle those times. Do you break down when things get tough? Or do you stay strong, learn, and keep going? Let's think about how we can start to treat ourselves with more respect. It could mean making clear limits or turning down things that don't fit with our morals. Treating ourselves with more kindness and respect could also mean that if you think you deserve respect, others will start to see it too. Lesson 3. How to Communicate Without Words I know this may sound a little old-fashioned or strict at first, but please hear me out. It's not about being hard to talk to. It's about knowing your worth and loving yourself. What does the idea of Stoicism say about this? Stoicism teaches us how to stay strong and in control, but not in a boring or strict way. It's about knowing what's important and not giving it away too easily in a world where everyone wants everything right away and scrolls forever. When we're in a relationship or just getting to know someone, we often feel rushed to share everything with them, our time, space, and deepest feelings. But Stoics would tell you to take a step back. They say this because when something is always available, it loses its uniqueness. It's just how humans are. If you're always there for someone when they need you saying yes to everything, where's the fun, the mystery? Let's talk about how to set limits in a calm way to avoid any trouble. In a world where everyone is connected all the time, managing your time and focus is also very important. Dressing stylishly but modestly sends a message that says, I respect myself. You're not hiding who you are, but you're also not revealing everything right away either. It's about finding balance and saying, there's more to me than what you see. Making choices about who gets your time is an important act. It's not about playing games. It's about reaffirming that my time is valuable and that I carefully choose how to spend it. When you're with someone, be fully present and engaged. When you're not, it's okay to be unreachable and focus on your own life goals and personal growth. Stoicism also stresses emotional self-mastery. It doesn't encourage being cold or detached. Instead, it encourages keeping a balanced view. This means not letting small things bother you too much. It's about keeping your cool and peace. You don't just give your mental energy to everyone. You have to earn it just like you choose who gets your time and attention. I'm not saying you should stop caring about other people or act like a stoic statue. We're all human, and real relationships are important for a happy life. But there's something special about taking things slowly. It's about making links that aren't just about getting what you want right away. It's about building deep, lasting relationships that go beyond instant gratification and quick fixes. Noting that setting limits isn't about controlling things or playing games is important. It's about honoring yourself and following your values. It's about showing that you value yourself and deserve to be treated with respect, not just through words but also through actions. So let's be a little more selective, composed, and stoic in how we handle our relationships. It's about finding a balance between being open and careful, between sharing and holding back. And trust me, it has a big effect on how other people see and treat you. Cheers to putting value on ourselves and EMB. Putting on a tough face when meeting today. The fourth lesson. Be ready to walk away in stoicism. There's a powerful idea about letting go, not in a cold or uncaring way, but by realizing what we can change and what we can't. One of the most empowering things we can do is choose whether to stay or leave a situation that doesn't serve our well-being. This is especially important in relationships. We've all been there. We know we deserve better, but we can't get it. This doesn't mean you should give up as soon as things get tough. Relationships take work, time, and understanding. But it's important to know your values and self-worth so well that you're ready to move on when something fundamentally goes against them. It's about having the inner strength and courage to say, I respect myself too much to settle for less than I deserve. Let's look into this idea more. 
you have to respect yourself to be ready to leave a situation. This means standing up for what you believe in and knowing your own worth. Leaving doesn't have to be a big deal all the time. Sometimes it's just a quiet choice, a peaceful understanding that this isn't right for you. I get that not knowing what the future holds can be scary, but remember our stoic friends. They taught us how to be strong in difficult situations and accept life's unknowns. Realizing that letting go of something that doesn't serve you is sometimes the bravest thing you can do. Having this view can change everything when you're in a relationship and learn that you're there because it fits your values. Not because you don't want to leave. You're not staying out of fear or desperation. You're staying because it's your real choice. And here's the important thing. When you bravely leave something that doesn't serve you, you make room for something that does. It's like clearing out the past to make room for the future. It's about believing that better things are waiting for you and giving yourself the chance to find them. Let's remember that being ready to move on doesn't mean being cold or uncaring. It means loving and respecting ourselves enough to say, I deserve something better. It means being strong when problems come up and knowing that our worth doesn't depend on other people or things. Lesson 5. Setting limits without speaking up. Stoicism stresses actions over words. The Stoics believe that beliefs should be shown, not just said. This is especially important when talking about setting boundaries in relationships. It's one thing to say what your boundaries are, but it's much more powerful to show them through your actions. Take a look at this. It's easy to say, I won't accept mistreatment, but the real test comes when you actually experience it. How will you act? Will you stick to your rules or give in? That's where real strength lies, not in words, but in deeds. I know this isn't easy. It can be tough, especially when emotions are involved. But let's remember what the Stoics said. We can choose how we react to situations. If someone crosses a line, it's your reaction, not your words, that sets and enforces that line. For example, if honesty is one of your core values and someone lies to you, how you react shows how serious you are about your boundaries. Whether you choose to calmly address the issue or decide to step back, your actions show how committed you are to your values. Showing self-respect by acting in a way that is in line with your beliefs is what it's all about. This can make a big difference in relationships. When people see that you have clear boundaries and are willing to stick to them, they get a better idea of what you will and won't put up with. It's about developing self-respect and sticking to it. Let's look at a basic idea in a straightforward way. Not only big events matter, but also small ones that happen every day. How do you behave when plans change at the last minute or when someone doesn't value you enough? Do you ignore it or calmly let them know that their behavior is not acceptable? If you want to be calm, you have to pay attention to the present moment and how you react to it. Are your actions in line with your limits? Are you being true to yourself? It's important to pay attention to the little things because that's when your limits are really put to the test as you go about your day and talk to other people. Let's try to be a little stoic when we set limits. It's not about being stubborn or unbending. It's about having an inner guide that tells us how to act and react. Trust me, when you take this method, things will work out better. People start to notice that you set limits and are willing to stick to them because you value yourself enough to do so. Education Lesson 6 Things That Do Talk Louder Than Words We've learned that Stoicism is about using practical wisdom, which means judging people by what they do instead of what they say. In our world, many people say nice things but don't mean them. This is especially true in relationships. Stoics tell us to see through the charm and focus on actions instead. Stoics tell us to pay attention to actions because actions reveal what is real. Think about this. It's easy for someone to say everything perfectly, make promises, and paint a picture of a future that seems perfect. But are they really doing what they say? Are their actions backing up what they say? That's where the truth lies. Let's be honest. We've all been in situations where someone says amazing things about us and we're instantly enchanted. But as time goes on, their actions don't match their words. They say they'll call, but they don't. They make plans, but they cancel at the last minute. But we still believe what they said. This is when our Stoic side has to take over. Stoicism tells us not to let words or feelings change our minds. 
When someone's actions don't match their words, that's a warning sign. It's like the universe is telling you, hey, pay attention, something isn't right here. Having this attitude changes how you deal with relationships, so you're not swept away by promises and that really makes an impact. They realize they can't just talk their way into your life. They have to prove they're real and worthy of your trust. But keep in mind that those people may not always keep their promises. Reality and Stoicism go hand in hand. Stoics thought that we should see things as they are, not how we want them to be. When it comes to love and dating, having a patient attitude can really help. We've all been there. Someone says all the right things, and we want to believe them, even if there are red flags that we should be aware of. The truth being properly skeptical is like having a superpower. It doesn't mean being negative or suspicious. It means staying realistic and not taking everything at face value. It means paying attention, asking questions, and not jumping into things without giving them some thought. Suppose you meet someone new and they seem great. They say lots of nice things and even talk about a future together, but it's only been a short time. Your skeptical, stoic mind would tell you to take it easy, wait to see if their actions match their words, and watch how things build. It's like a gentle wake-up call telling you not to get too caught up in romance and to stay grounded and aware. Being skeptical doesn't mean asking a lot of questions or doubting everything the other person does. It means being thoughtful and taking the time to really understand someone, to see if they're honest and consistent. The Stoics stressed using logic and reason instead of letting emotions take over in relationships. This is a very important way of thinking because when emotions take over, we may miss important details. But when we mix our feelings with a bit of skepticism and logical thinking, we can see things more clearly. And here's another important thing. Keeping a bit of skepticism means you're not rushing into something without knowing for sure. It's about being smart and paying attention and not letting our feelings get the best of us. It's about keeping our emotional health and safety in mind. It's not about shutting down, but about taking new chances with extra care and thought. Lesson 8. How to Say No with Confidence and Stoicism. It's important to be true to yourself and your ideals. Being brave enough to stay true to yourself. This is especially important when it comes to relationships because it means knowing what you believe and not being afraid to stick to your standards, even if it causes problems. For example, if you're in a relationship and your partner suggests doing something that doesn't feel good to you, it could be moving too quickly or asking you to do something that goes against your values. It might seem like the easy thing to do, but this is where your tough mentality comes in handy. Saying no in these situations is all about respecting yourself, your beliefs, and your limits. The little voice in your head keeps telling you that this isn't easy. It can be really hard, especially if you care about the person. What if saying no turns them off? We're whispering. But here's the thing. We need to get brave. Stoicism isn't just about dealing with problems in the outside world. It's also about dealing with problems inside our own heads. Being able to say no with confidence shows that you value yourself and won't settle for less than what you deserve. Of course, there's a chance that you could lose them, but that's not the point. If turning down something that goes against your values makes them leave, then maybe they weren't the right person for you in the first place. This approach can really change the dynamics of a relationship. When someone sees that you're not afraid to say no, and won't give up your values to please them. It changes how they see you. It shows that you respect and value yourself, which is actually very attractive. Another quiet point of view. Saying no isn't just about setting limits with other people. It's also about being honest with yourself. It means figuring out what you really want and need in a relationship and sticking to those. It means not letting the fear of being alone push you into choices that aren't in line with your true self. Let's take a moment to think about this. Saying no is not only okay, it's necessary. It's about staying true to ourselves and living with integrity. Education Lesson 9. Never Chase Value This fits well with everything we've been talking about, especially when we look at it from a calm point of view. Stoicism tells us to focus on what we can change and let go of what we can't. When we think about relationships, this idea has a big impact. It means understanding that 
chasing after someone who is moving away from us is not only pointless, but it also goes against knowing our own worth. Let's say you're meeting someone and things are going well, but then they start pulling away. Our first instinct, which we've all felt, is to run after them to try to close the gap. But stoicism can help us do that instead. Why are you pursuing something that you can't control? Would be a question the Stoics would ask. The answer lies in your sense of self-worth, your sense of honor, and your inner peace. Chasing after someone who is pulling away is like trying to hold water in your hands. It doesn't work. Instead makes you feel empty. The conservative way of life tells you to be sure of your own worth. It's not about being cold or unfeeling to let someone go. It's about realizing that you can't change how other people feel or act, but you can change how you react. Let's face it, this isn't easy. It takes a lot of inner strength to resist the urge to check up on someone. It's believing that if someone really values you, they will show it. It's refusing to let someone else's behavior affect you. Define your worth, it makes you feel good. This way of thinking changes everything. It gives you control over your feelings and actions. You're no longer dependent on other people's unpredictable actions. It's freeing and empowering. And here's the best part. When you stop chasing other people and start investing in your own life and growth, wonderful things start to happen. You naturally attract people who are similar to you. Written self-respect and focusing on what we can control, we should find peace within ourselves instead of looking for approval from others. As we come to the end of our conversation today, I want you to remember something very important. Your self-worth is like the brightest thread that binds everything together. Just like the Stoics thought, you can choose how to react to what happens around you. Don't forget that you are in charge of your own honor and self-esteem. Embrace your inner strength. Click on it, and let's keep going on this journey together. Thanks for joining me in this talk. Remember that you're not going through this journey by yourself. We're all figuring it out together, one step at a time until our next chat. Remember to be careful, smart, and to keep accepting your inner calm.